Okay, so uh, this is such an interesting topic we're trying to discuss today. So how to build a better world? And um, it's hard to find an answer to this question, but I know this much in order to build things, you need the right tools. And um, I want to talk to you today about the most powerful and most, uh, most interesting tool of the 21st century. And I'm talking, of course, about the computer. But before I begin, let me get something off my chest. So I work as a teacher, and uh, my subjects are German and Catholic faith, all right? <laughs> So now you may say, okay, this guy is probably the least qualified person to talk about computers. And well, maybe you're right, and, but I'm not here to tell you about artificial intelligence or how the internet works. I just want to share with you three things I learned about computers. So um, about four years ago, I started a coding club in my school. And at about the same time, some very passionate people in the UK, they released a little computer called Raspberry Pi. Maybe some of you know this computer. And um, well, I, I was very excited because it was a computer made especially for schools. And so I bought one and I tried it at home and well, I hated it first because the Raspberry Pi is unlike any other computer you can buy because uh, nothing works out of the box. So there is no operating system and no manual. So when you connect it to a monitor, nothing happens if you don't know how to do it. Uh, but I saw on the internet that you could build really cool stuff with this computer. And so I thought, well, let's give it a try. And uh, I bought 10 of these computers and it was the beginning of a very interesting journey. And um, so while I was thinking about what to do in this coding club, um, I had one question in mind. And this question was, what is it that everybody should know about computers? So especially pupils and teachers. And um, so while I was thinking about that question, I went to my parents' attic and um, uh, there I found this. Do you know what this is? So it's, it's called a comptometer. And it was a very common piece of technology up until the 70s, so for almost 100 years. And it's a mechanical calculator. And uh, let me show you how it works. So um, this is what it looks like. And when you press a number on this keypad, then the number is displayed down there. And then when you press another number, so for example, four, then these two numbers numbers are added and you can see the result down in the display. And you can even multiply or divide numbers and I thought, wow, it's cool. So it's kind of the first computer, right? <laughs> and, um, w and it's very easy to understand how it works. It's, it's complicated, but if you open it up, there are little gears inside and they turn when you press the key and so it's, it's not very hard to understand how it works. And I thought, well, okay, so, so why are there no, no little moving gears? in a modern computer, right? So this was the question. I, I, I don't knew very much about computers. And the reason why is uh, this little black dot you can see over there. So it's a transistor. And some people say it's the most important invention of the past hundred years. And you can think of a transistor as a little electronic switch which can turn on and off very, very fast. So several billion times a second. And if you, if you have a smartphone like this, so a modern smartphone, it, it consists of over so several billion transistors, right? So we have this tool and it consists of little electronic switches which you can turn on and off very, very fast. And I think this is the first thing everybody should know about computers. So um, the computer con consists of little switches which you can turn on and off very, very fast. Okay, but what can you do with these switches? And uh, this is where the Raspberry Pi comes into play. And uh, this is what it looks like. So this is the Raspberry Raspberry Pi Deluxe version, so it costs about 35 euro. And it has wireless LAN built inside and Bluetooth, and you can um, set it up very easy. You just put a micro SD card inside, it's like a hard disk, and then you connect mouse and keyboard and an HDMI cable for the monitor and uh, a power cord, and then, then it boots up. So, as I said, this is the kind of a deluxe version of the Raspberry Pi. So, all the thing, things I'm now going to show you uh, are running on this Raspberry Pi. It's called a Raspberry Pi Zero, and it costs only 5 euro. 
All right. So this is a fully functional computer for only five euro. And the reason why it is so cheap is because it is made by a charity. So there is a charity in the UK, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and they are making this computer, as I said, especially for schools. And uh, well, so let me show you what you can do with this uh, machine. So. Um, when you uh, boot the Raspberry Pi, it looks like any other computer, right? You have a graphical uh, interface, and then you have uh, Office software. Maybe you know LibreOffice is an open source uh, Office software, and there is also image manipulation programs, and of course a web browser, an email client, and so on. But the fun stuff about the Raspberry Pi is that it is very easy to learn programming. And this is the second thing I think everybody should know about computers learn how to write simple code. And I did this in my coding club with a special version of Minecraft. And um, if you have kids, you know this game, right? Maybe you, if, even if you don't have kids, <laughs> you know this game. It's one of the most popular computer games of all time, right? And um, there is a special version available for the Raspberry Pi, so for free. Um, the, the, the guy who made Minecraft thought, okay, I want to support this Pi Foundation and I make a special version of Minecraft for free, which runs, which runs on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and um, so one of the programming languages we use is called Python. And it's a, it's a very professional programming language which is used not only in schools, and um, it's very easy to to load it, uh, you just uh, type in Python in this terminal, and it, it, it is a very easy to understand programming language. So for example, if you want to um, uh, add two numbers, you just type in four plus five, and then you have the, the result. And if you want to set up a variable, you can just type a equals four, and then you can calculate a plus five, and then you have the result, right? And um, now you can establish a connection between this programming language and Minecraft. And it's also very easy. You just type in a command from MCPI import Minecraft. And then I have to set up another variable. So um, this just saves me some time later on while typing. And now I can, I can set a block in this word. So simply by typing mc.setBlock, and then I have to type in the coordinates where the player stands. So right now, I, this is a, a new word I made. So he's standing at 0, 0, 0. So this is x, y, z coordinates. And if I add a few numbers to the y coordinate, then I can set a block in this word. So for example, a stone block. And now I can change the stone block to another kind of block. And um, like this, or I can make some, some lava flowing down. And then I can put some water above it and see what happens. And so this is a kind of programming, right? So the, the, the kids learn a lot while doing this. So they understand how, to, you know, how the coordinates work and so on. And um, then they are ready to do more complicated stuff. So for example, uh, build a house. So I give them a pen and a paper, and they are uh, drawing the house, and then they say, okay, so what do I have to do? What commands do I have to type in to get this house? So I put a block there and there, and then um, you get something like this. So this is a very little, a very small program which consists of only 10 lines of code. And it makes a diving tower and puts you on top of the tower, and then you can jump down and so. Um, so this is some, some very easy programming uh, which you can do. And um, there are also some other coding languages running on the Raspberry Pi, like Scratch. Maybe you know if you have ever coded with kids. It's a very um, common programming language made in the MIT uh, or Sonic Pi, so w with which you can program music. So very cool if you're interested in music. 
Okay, so but the most interesting part about the Raspberry Pi is the so-called GPIO port. <laughs> so it stands for General Purpose Input Output, and uh, these are uh, these pins you can see on the top of the Raspberry Pi. And to these pins, you can connect almost any electronic component, so such as a button or an LED or motors, and um, so. Uh, what I just showed you is uh, the, the second most important thing, learn how to code. And I think the third thing everybody should know about computers is how to build stuff with a computer. And um, so the first thing I let my uh, pupils build uh, when they want to learn how the GPIO port works is a little game, gaming controller. And now you say, okay, oh, it sounds expensive, right, to build a gaming controller, but it, it really isn't because, uh, so this is what it, um, what it looks like. And it's, uh, I don't know if you recognize, it's a shell from a, from a candy called a surprise egg, right? <laughs> so you normally just throw it away, it's kind of a garbage. And um, there is a little button um, and an LED and a resistor and a few cable. And uh, then you can connect it to, to the Raspberry Pi and um, use it to control a video game, or you can use it to uh, to build blocks in Minecraft, so whatever you want, you right, you can program it, and um, you can even make a, a deluxe version of it, which is uh, what I'm using right now to control this presentation. So this, there's a little Bluetooth chip inside, and uh, a little USB port, so you can charge it, and uh, then you have your wireless controller, which you can use well, for example, for the presentation. And um, so this is another thing we built. It's it's a Game Boy, and um, so uh, it, it was broken, right? So I didn't uh, uh, break a function a Game Boy, and um, so. Um, and inside the Game Boy is also a Raspberry Pi, also a Raspberry Pi Zero for five euro, and um, also a little a little display and a battery, and then you have a, a portable computer or portable gaming console, so whatever you want, right? You can plug in a mouse and keyboard and the USB port, and then you have can do whatever you want with it. Um, or another thing is uh, we, we we took a toy, right? Uh, so this is uh, something you can you can buy, um, uh, Lego Wally, -E. and um, we also built a Raspberry Pi inside and uh, added a few motors, and then you can um, w make your own robot, and then you can control it in any way you want. So for example, we we took a Nintendo Wii remote, right? So this is from a gaming console, and then you can use it to to uh, to move the robot around. Or you could also uh, connect it to the internet and then you can control it with a keyboard or anything you want. Right? So these are some of the things you can do with this very, very cheap computer, right? So five euro. And, um, and but we, we just tinkered around with the Raspberry Pi, but l let me show you what, what's, what a smart person can do with this thing. <laughs> and uh, this is um, the smartest person I found. So this is Miriam Stötzer. And she's 16 years old, and um, she used a Raspberry Pi and a little camera. And um, you, can see, you can see it there, and it scans the eye. And then when you move the eye up, uh, the, the wheelchair moves forward. And when the eye is turned to the left, you, the wheelchair turns to the left, and so on. So uh, well, it is, it's, it's a great idea, but um, it's not so hard to code this kind of stuff with, with the Raspberry Pi. Right? And um, so let's get back to the main question. So um, Steve Jobs once said, what a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with, and it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. So maybe you, you know this quote. It's a very famous quote. And uh, I really do believe this is true. So this is uh, really the most powerful tool. And um, um, I, I want pupils to, to use this tool to, uh, to build stuff, right? And um, so what we are doing right now is um, we are um, creating a space. So I'm from Düsseldorf, um, and it is called uh, the Coding Schule, so a coding school. And this is a place for pupils, for teachers, for parents, where they can learn all th these kind of things I just showed you, right? How to, how to use a computer, how to build stuff, uh, how to learn how to program, and um, well,
if we get back to the to the main question, so what is it everybody should know about computers? It's so learn how it works, right? To have a basic understanding of how a computer works. Uh, learn how to write simple code, right? For example, with Minecraft, with Scratch, Sonic Pi, program music, etc. And learn how to build things. And I really want to encourage you. So uh, there is a coding club in almost any any city or a makerspace, and um, I um, want to encourage you to, to to go there and uh, have a look what the people are doing. And um, or do, if there is no, do it as I did and make your own. Right? You don't really need to know a lot of stuff. So if you uh, come together, uh, you can you can learn a lot of stuff. So one person once said, uh, the Raspberry Pi is not a computer, it's a community. And I also do believe this is true. And um, if, you, if you come together, you can learn how to, um, how to create things. And then you can, can become a producer instead of a consumer of digital technology. And I think this makes the world a better place. <laughs> Thank you.